this boy? What's this? And fetch. So this week I'm in my first ever workshop and I'm really excited about that because I can't wait to sink my teeth into a few projects. But one of the things I didn't know how to use and I was frightened about was a lathe. So a few months ago I contacted Record Power to see if they'd teach me and a few other friends just generally how to get started and do simple things like some spindles and a bowl. So this week I'm going to show you how it went. So I met up with a couple of my YouTube friends and that is Joe from Average Joe's Joinery and Martin at MG Makes. But we were also expecting Claire from making it out of the woods but in the end she couldn't make it. So I'm going to leave the links to their channels below. But together, including John Clothier, another YouTuber, we've created a team called the Make Team. And the idea is that we're a bit of a road trip team and we can keep adding and changing new members to take part in any learning experience days like you're seeing here today. It's obviously just great to learn something new and then we can keep progressing in our own workshops at home. And we're getting a tour at the moment of the whole factory in Chesterfield and it was also great to see that many of the pieces were manufactured in-house as well. And this is Craig from Record Power who agreed to this day and he's just showing us how to use a bandsaw before I give it a go for the first time. So general rule of thumb with bandsaws is the bigger you go on bandsaw size, the longer the blade is going to be, the more powerful the motor is and the bigger the working area is going to be. Mm -hmm. But when you said 350, like a BS 350, that means it's this one, means it's 350 millimetre from there to there. So that's the throat. Right. And then you've got your depth of cut. And on this one, you'll get nine and a quarter inch depth of cut. And now we're getting taught how to use their plane of thicknesser. That's it feeding it through without any cut on. And Craig's setting up the lathes for us and talking through the do's and don'ts. Slightly to the right, so not going to come off the tool rest when the wood's there, there's support there you want to not turn. Right. If I want to wire up, I'll move it across because I'm going along. Or obviously we can put the bigger tool rest on, depending on what job you're doing. So, I'm at about a thousand, I'm going to make myself safe by being balanced. I'm going to tuck the tool rest, the tool into the, the side here, and I'm on the tool rest itself. Yeah. And then I will on the bed. Because I think the back handle there, you'll feel the cut. All you're doing, if you stop now and have a look at that, we're just ripping the timber. We're just taking the, it from square to round, and you can see this quite a rough finish on there. So I'm not something that you, you want to do, but we're after a nice finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the tool rest off the back handle there, and we're going to take the tool rest off the back handle there, and we're going to do is we're going to plane the wood. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing where we're tucked in here. Yeah. We're resting on the tool rest and we're rubbing on the bevel. Okay, and as I find the centre of the tool, you go from a rough stone piece of timber, which is all this is purpose left, to something with a nice finish. Oh, that's just that's... amazing. And what you'll find is, when you see the shavings that are coming off, they start to look like a plain finish, not a load of dust. So if you were the skill chisel, and we're going to taper that down now, so all we're going to do, we've had, we've had to come lower down because we want to get a smaller diameter. So all I'm doing is tapering. And we're going to use the point and we're going to come in and bring the back, bring the back hand up, and then we're going to go across. And I've took a space out. Uh, and what I've done there, I've done that space, because all I'm going to do is roll what we call rolling a beam. And we just find the corner, and then I'm going to rub on with the bell, and I'm going to bring my back hand up. We've got to keep that bevel pressed on. And we're starting to do what we call like the foot of the stubble, if you like. Obviously, again, we've still got outside shapes that we're doing, that's all we've done on them. If we want to do an inside shape, we change the tool to a spindle gouge. Because it allows you to go in as you're doing right. it. So we're on tool number three now, but look what we've created already with the, the shapes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so now it's my turn to take the tool rest off the back handle. So I'm going to take the tool rest So now it's my turn and I've got a fresh piece of wood. I'm just drawing a line with a ruler to create a cross to find the centre. 
Although I didn't realise that I needed to do this on both sides. Oh, I was meant to do it on that side as well. Yeah. <laughs> right, you've got to get yourself comfortable in front right. of it. Like we said, so, so we're just going to get evenly balanced, and then if you put your left hand underneath and on the tool rest, so your fingers are going to run the tool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're yeah. tucked in, you're tucked in here. Yeah. Now, now drop your back hand down, your right hand down, drop it down, keep going down, keep going down. Yeah. So that we can rub on with this bevel without taking a cut, we're still taking a cut. Think it's going along. Yeah, but drop your back hand down a bit more. Right, now as you bring your back hand up, right, so we'll feel the cut. Oh, So I'm starting with the skew chisel, trying to get the right angle where it's just skimming the surface and the speed was slightly slower for me because I'd never done it before and I'm wearing safety goggles. If I do this at home without any supervision then I'm definitely going to wear a full mask. I did feel shaky to start off with, I wasn't sure how much pressure I needed to put on it but while I'm leaning on the lathe rest as well I definitely started to feel a lot more comfortable with it and it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought it would be. So then Joe from Average Joe's Joinery is behind me and he's having a go at a spindle as well. But if you check out his channel, he's definitely been getting some practice under his belt before this day. Now, the other thing I found really interesting was when Craig told us that bowls are generally easier than spindles. And I really thought it would be the other way around. So he set up a bowl blank for us and this became a community project that we all helped in different stages. So we've now got Martin from MG Makes getting started, rounding off the bottom of the bowl. Oh, and I forgot that the lathe that they're working on right now is Record Power's latest Herald lathe and chuck. So I'll leave the links to things below, but it's definitely eye candy for me at the moment. So now Martin's created some ridges. It was then my turn to start hollowing out the inside of the bowl. Oh, and I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who nominated me to win a Brilliance in Blogging Award. Thankfully to you, I am now a finalist. So the voting is now open and I'll leave a link below on how you can do it. But my food blog made it as well. So if you could vote for Tasteful Vicky in section four and the Carpenter's Daughter under number 11, I'd be absolutely over the moon. But bear in mind, you don't have to select someone under each category. It's just so much fun learning and sharing like days like this. And although I didn't do the whole of it, I definitely found some sort of rhythm. And I think this was one of my favorite parts of it. I'll definitely have to work up some stamina because my arms started to ache. So I thought it was a perfect time to pass it on to Joe. The other thing that I've always wondered is how do you know when to stop? So a couple of suggestions were to use a caliper and measure the depth or to use a bright light on the opposite end to see if you could see it or not through the wood or just generally try and wing it. So Martin's now back on the bowl to finish it off and then sanded it using a sanding pad attached to a screwdriver. So I thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to collaborate with friends over a project. We had so much fun meeting at Maker Central. So I just thought this would be a great learning day for us and it really was. So I can't thank Record Power enough for saying yes. So the next thing I need to do is set up my lathe in my workshop and just give things a go.